To receive confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account, number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Okay, guys, it's super important. By the way, gonna look pretty, man. Now listen, get your notepads out, get your phones out, use the notepad feature because the important updates for this week are coming up. You definitely don't want to miss out on how you can connect, grow, and serve. Come on, man, let's go, let's go, let's do this, family. Baby blessing registration can now be done online. Visit our church center app below to register your child. Baby blessings take place on the first Sunday of each month. Meetup, the young adult-led ministry will be online only this Monday, February 26, due to the local government elections. See you live and in living colors next week Monday, March 4. There will be no meetup in person this Monday. Dance like David with Dance Connection. This and every other Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at number 5. Click the Church Center app below and register today. Recharge your mind, body, and spirit at Wellness Wednesday. This and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at number 7. Commit to a healthier, happier you. Ladies, join Arise this Friday, March 1, as we continue our series exploring the different pathways in which we connect to God. Start time, 6.30 p.m. See you there. Brother, talk the truth. Money matters. But we want to control money and not have money control we. Bruce Scott, I'm going to help you understand how that works as we talk dollars and cents. This Friday, March 1st, starting at 7 p.m. This is the first hard talk of 2024. Bring your brethren. This is a male-only event. Mellow is the men's ministry of Fall of Future. It's finally here, the Arise Potluck Fellowship. Saturday, March 2, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the courtyard at number nine. Bring some food and together, ladies, we create the fellowship. We are going to have a wonderful time. See you there. The Sports and Recreation Ministry is pleased to present the Swallow Quiz Competition, the first PETA series. Connect and medium groups, assemble your teams, listen keenly to the sermons, take notes and showcase your knowledge and teamwork for a chance to lift the championship trophy. Register your teams today and let us connect and grow together. Which team will emerge the champions? Register now in the foyer. Join us in worship next Sunday as Pastor David continues to guide us through our reflections in 1 Peter. Remember to invite someone to church and bring the entire family. Come and be blessed. Meet up online tomorrow. Okay, got it. And I hope you got it as well. But if not, don't worry, we have you covered. Swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com is the website that you can go to right now. You'll see the list of events coming up and you'll also find the different ministries where you can connect, grow, and serve. Yeah, man, let's get involved and let us make this an amazing week for somebody and just, just be awesome, just like how God for you to do to be. Take care now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Welcome to church. 
We are so happy you could join us. My name is Gloria Rallins. We will continue our series looking through the book of 1 Peter. Our speaker is Paul Hemmings, and the title of this message is Hope to Cope. Our mission here at Swallowfield is to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do this by connecting, growing, and serving. This simply means that we help people to connect to God and to the Christian community of faith, the church. We help people to grow as faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we empower people to serve wherever God has placed you in the world. Today we will have communion, so please get your bread or biscuit, wine or grape juice ready as we partake in this act of worship together. So don't forget to share this link with your family and friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come, let us worship together. Yes. There's victory in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, all praise belongs to the Father. Every battle is won through the Son. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise Him. Everybody clap your hands. Praise Him. Come on and dance. Praise Him. Lift up your voice and sing. Come on and sing. Lift up your voice and sing. taken from 1 Peter 3, 13 to 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water, and this water symbolizes baptism, that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. 
it saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. You know it's in from every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue say, Sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Say, you came from heaven to earth to show. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, you will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, I'm so glad to tell. Alleluia, alleluia, with my soul Say. as well. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Solo. You know, I have a new name for you. You're called Rock Solid. We continue our series in Rock Solid, the series here on First Peter, the book of First Peter. What an exciting book and an interesting book. Well for me, for sure, as I prepare and I, as I try to digest all of what I'm learning um, you know, it's just a wonderful book to be in. And I hope that we have been learning so much about suffering. Let me thank uh, Gloria Rollins for reading the scriptures for us. Thank you so much, Gloria. And you read so eloquently. Really appreciate, appreciate you. And of course, this is our seventh sermon in the series. Remember, we had Rock Solid, we had Holy by His Grace, done by a pastor. We had Unchained by His Grace, again by Pastor D. Transformers by Pastor D. Then you had Bleep, that curse word that was last week, um, or week before last, I should say. And then last week, we had Kings and Queens, done by Pastor David Henry. Today, we're going to be looking and calling this one Hope to Cope. Hope to cope. Let me just read a portion again. Of course, just for emphasis, just about three verses. Just going to read these three verses from verse 13 of chapter 3 
of First Peter. Here goes. Peter writes, Who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. Do And do not fear their intimidation. And do not be troubled, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you for First Peter. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging our hearts in these times that we are in. And some of us, we have been experiencing difficult times in our workplace, difficult times in the marketplace, difficult times in our home space, and difficult times even at church. Everywhere, Lord God, there are difficult times, and we experience difficult times for your sake. And so, Lord, help us to give us a perspective, an eternal perspective. So as we hear one more sermon again in the book of Peter, Lord, I pray that you'll perform the miracle of preaching, the miracle whereby our lives are transformed, our will becomes conformed to yours, and our personalities become formed and shaped into that of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, what we have not give us, what we know not teach us, and what we are not make us. We pray these things in our Lord's name. Amen. Amen. Elpis appears in ancient Greek mythology with the story of Zeus and Prometheus. Prometheus stole fire from the god Zeus, which infuriated the supreme god. In turn, Zeus created a box that contained all manners of evil, unbeknownst to the receiver of the box. Pandora opened the box after being warned not to and unleashed a multitude of harmful spirits that inflicted plagues, diseases, illnesses on mankind. Spirits of greed, envy, hatred, mistrust, sorrow, anger, revenge, lust, and despair scattered far and wide looking for humans to torment. Inside the box, however, there was also an unleashed healing spirit named hope. From ancient times, people have recognized that a spirit of hope had the power to heal afflictions and helps them bear times of great suffering, illnesses, disasters, loss, and pain caused by the malevolent spirits and events. The personification of hope is named Elpis. Now, we don't believe in Greek mythology, of course, but this sets things up as we look today at the word hope, at the concept of hope. Central to our text today is that word, hope. Peter says, always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you. Now, today, the word hope has just been co become con uh, con um, confusing. In fact, hope is a word that is it's not a certain word anymore. It's not a word that you can really depend on anymore. In fact, hope is something that you want to happen, that you desire to, to happen. In fact, Alexander Pope, in his essay on man, he pens this phrase, this poetical phrase. He says, Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Man never is, but always to be blessed. Man never is, but always to be blessed. Let me just kind of interpret that a little bit. What he's saying, really, is that man will never, ever be blessed. Man will never, ever be satisfied, but he will always be. In other words, he's always longing for Hope is always longing and hoping that one day good will come to him. This statement is despairing. This statement is a gloomy one. This statement is negative body, pessimistic man. It not give you no hope. No hope at all. And so today we want to look at hope. We want to look at what hope is. And for the Christian, hope is something that has a basis. Hope is something that has a foundation. Hope is something that we can look forward to. Hope is something that we can be certain about. And in our text today, 
Peter continues to talk to the church and encourage the church about holding on during suffering and just not staying the course no matter what is happening to the church. And he's, he's encouraging them. And he, he starts from chapter 1. In fact, he goes at length to help them to understand who they are in Christ in, in chapter 2. And then he, he talks about submission starting in, in chapter 3. And he wants them to understand that amidst all of what is happening, the suffering, submit to the authorities. And we looked at that week before last, and we looked at that also last week. And he took it from the workplace, and he puts it also into the, the home. We should be submissive. Today, I want to look at three points as we look at this whole matter of, of hope. And I want to just look, first of all, at the exasperating circumstances ahead of us the exasperating circumstances ahead of us. I want to look at the experience of a convert alongside us. And then I'm going to finally look at an example and encouragement of Christ, the ancestor of us. Let me just repeat that quickly. Exasperating circumstances ahead of us, the experience of a convert alongside us, and, and the example and encouragement of Christ, the ancestor of us as believers. Let's look at the exasperating circumstances ahead of us. Peter begins with a question. He says, who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? So Peter starts with this question. It's a, it's a practical question. It's a question that it's almost rhetorical. The truth is what Peter is saying. Is, the truth is, if you are zealous of what is good, guess what? There will be no harm that will befall you by the authorities. So it's a rhetorical question. But even though it's a question of, of rhetoric, rhetoric, Peter catches himself. But before we look at Peter catching himself, let's look at this. What the point that Peter wants to make with this question is this, that we have common ground with society. In other words, even though we're Christians and the rest of society, we're not Christians. In other words, they're not uh, children of God and we are children of God. The truth is as children of God and non-children of God, there are some common things that we want together. Let me help you to understand that. We, all of us want harmony, not true? All of us want peace. All of us want prosperity. All of us want joy. All of us want wealth. All of us want well-being. All of us want health. Every society wants all of these things and all of these virtues, these things that help us to be better people. So whether you're a Christian or not, we want that. In other words, we have these things in common. So Peter is being practical. Peter is saying, listen, my friends, if you are good, no authority is going to trouble you. No authority is going to harm you. No authority is going to punish you. But Peter catches himself because Peter realized that even when you are trying to be good, as a Christian, there's a different kind of good that we understand to be good as Christians. You see, our understanding of good differs sometimes from the world. It's not every kind of good that we accept, and it's not every kind of good the world accepts from us. So some things the world may see as good and okay. It's okay for two persons of the same sex to love. Isn't that love? Aren't we, aren't we promoting love? But we're saying, no, not that kind of love, but we want love. So Peter recognized that something is wrong with his question of rhetoric. So he catches himself. And then he says, but even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness. So Peter recognizes that, guess what? You can suffer for the sake of of righteousness. So the first, when he begins, he begins with a practical statement, but then he looks at something that is possible, the possibility. And here's what, so Peter recognizes that we have common ground, but also we have conflict with society. So we don't just have common ground with society, we have conflict with society. In other words, Peter recognized that, as I said before, the society's understanding of good is not necessarily our understanding of good. So there's a conflict going on here. And when I did bleep that, that sermon, I, I gave it a chat and it showed about this civil disobedience and all of these things because there's a conflict going on. And Christians, I want us to understand that there is a real battle going on, a battle of ideas, a battle, a battle of gods, a battle of, 
of light versus darkness. There is a, you can't play dumb and play deaf. You have to understand. There is a battle. There's a conflict. But not just that. Peter continues. He says, but even if we should suffer for the sake of righteousness, guess what he said to them? He said to them, you are blessed. You are blessed. In other words, we have comfort in spite of society. So we have a common ground with society, but we have a conflict with society. But Peter wants to encourage the saints. He says, but you have comfort in society. Peter says, you are blessed. Does that remind you of something? It reminds us of the Beatitudes. Remember that? Blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you. Nine times Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, blessed are you. Understand that the believer in Jesus Christ is blessed. No matter what the suffering is, no matter what the hardship is, God sees us as blessed. They're going through some rough times. Like I said to you, that Nero is putting them up on, 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 a, on a stake, burning them and, and using them as lamp, lampstand to, to entertain himself. Yet he, what Peter wants them to understand, in spite of that, guess what? You are blessed. Touch your neighbor beside you and say, you are blessed. You are blessed. But Peter continues. He says, and do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled. I'm bringing in a while a little bit of politics. I went from being practical to the possibility, to the position we have as being blessed, and I'm bringing in now a little politics. Hear what Peter says again. And do not fear their intimidation, and do not be troubled. Now, if you look carefully in your Bibles, if you have it there with you, if you have your phones with you too, you might see it in your phones, you will notice that that is either in italics or it is in bold. Or it is in all caps. You know why? Because Peter is quoting the Old Testament. And the Old Testament verse he's quoting is, this is taken from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 12 and 13. Let me just read it for you quickly. And in fact, I'm going to read from verse 11. It says, For thus the Lord spoke to me with mighty power and instructed me not to walk in the way of his people, saying, You are not to say it is a conspiracy in regard to all that these people call conspiracy. And you are not to fear what they fear or be dread, in dread of it. It is the Lord of hosts whom you should regard as holy, and he shall be your fear, and he shall be your dread. Watch me carefully. So Peter draws on an Old Testament scripture. Because he's talking to these Christians. Some of them Jews, some of them Gentiles. But of course, these Gentiles have Jewish influence as well. And he wants them to understand that in the past, when God wrote this to, uh, to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah was speaking to Judah. And Judah was about to be attacked by Assyria. And guess who? Assyria and Israel was teaming up together to go fight Judah. And imagine the brother and sister of Judah going team up with another, the Assyrians, who are very voracious and wicked. But they went team up together against Judah. And Isaiah says to the people then, do not fear the conspiracy. Do not fear these, 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 what is coming up against you. And so Peter draws on that. And Peter is saying to them there, do not fear what man will do to you. Instead, fear God. Fear God. Fear this holy God and fear this dreadful God. So hear what now? Hear this. We have a common ground with society. We have a conflict with, with society. We have comfort in spite of society, but also we have a command and commander amid society. God is our commander and God gives his command. The command is do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled. So what? You're at work and there are some things they are about to uh, pass at work and tell you at work and you know in society and so on. We have to stand our ground and we are not going to be fearful. Easy for me to say no, but it's the truth. We're not going to be fearful because we know that we have a commander who has given us a command to stand our ground because he will fight for us. Hallelujah. God is on our side. So 
those are the exasperating circumstances around the, the people of Peter's Day. And also today, we recognize that we, have, we are in a society that doesn't necessarily see eye to eye with what the church intends or wants to do. But we must move on. Let's look at the experience of a convert alongside us. So Peter is writing. And Peter says, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. And then he says, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Now, I call this the experience of a convert alongside us. The convert I'm talking about is Peter. And Peter come alongside the church. Now, Peter doesn't come along the side of the church and Peter is living in his mansion and his house and he's apostle and therefore he does give dic dic dictates as to what to do. Peter is right there with them. Peter has experienced this before. In fact, if you look carefully at Peter's words, you know, I can locate Peter's words in Acts chapter 3 and 4. Acts chapter 3 and 4, of course, Peter, remember, heal a lame man, him and, him and John, and him heal this man, and him get a chance to preach because people were just in awe of what Peter was doing. And as he was in awe, they were in awe of what Peter was doing. The, the authorities uh, captured, arrested Peter. And when they arrested Peter, they said to Peter, listen, you know, let me just read for you, verse 7 of chapter 4 in Acts. When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, by what power or in what name have you done this? In other words, they are saying to Peter, tell us and um, speak up for yourself. Give an answer for yourself. And Peter, the scripture says, being filled with the Holy Ghost. You know how many of Peter filled with the Holy Ghost? Because the last time Peter met a tribunal like this, him take for himself. No, Peter not running. And the last time I met Peter, Peter chatting all sorts of foolishness, denying Jesus. No, Peter talking sensibly. Because he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And that made a difference, a transformation in Peter's life. Yes, the resurrection did something for Peter. But I think more so, the filling of the Holy Ghost, the coming of the Holy Ghost in Peter's life was transforming totally. And Peter now is able to say, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. I want to make three quick points under this point. Listen to this. First thing Peter is saying, declare Christ as Lord. Watch this. Now that's lost upon me and you, Lena. If me, if me and you declare Jesus as Lord, I mean, people just say, okay, fine, he's a Christian man. All right, cool. But in that day, Caesar was Lord. So when Peter tell them to do that, you know, Peter, Peter is asking the people to take some big risk with them life, you know. Peter is saying to them, listen, my man, you are not going to declare Caesar as Lord. You're going to tell people, say, Jesus is Lord. In other words, we're depending on you to lip it and to live it. So he says to them, sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. Now, if Jesus is Lord of your heart, guess what? Whatever is in your heart will be spill out into reality. Let us just, just make a note of that. Whatever is in your heart will spill out in reality. The scripture says it. What, 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 whatever, whatever the heart is in the heart, the scripture tells us that it must come forth out of you. And so Peter says to them, sanctify Christ as Lord. In other words, dec declare Christ as Lord. What does that look like for us today? That looks like us, one, lipping it, saying it. Uh, my friend, my friend Lance, you know, one of our connect groups, Lance says, you know, that we should, when we, whenever we go to our workplace, especially for the first time, we're going to be employed at a place for the first time. He believes that every Christian must tell everybody at the beginning, I am a Christian. And, and we're looking at it, we say, why, why Lance? I mean, we don't want to do that and turn off people, man. But he says, make a good point. He says, when you do that, you make yourself accountable. We see some of us want to work in our workplace. Nobody going to know we are Christian. They know what we name, our first name, our last name. They know probably what, who our family is. We, certainly in Kingston, for you Kingstonians, they know what school you got, high school you got to, and where you got your get degrees in and so on. But they don't necessarily know. We don't put it up front that I am a Christian. But you see, when we do that, 
people hold us accountable. That's what may you're afraid of. We don't want the accountability. We don't want people to be scrutinizing us and everything we do, them, them judge us and that kind of, we don't want that. We're afraid of that. But I challenge us, declare Jesus as Lord. Secondly, Peter says, not only declare Jesus as Lord, but defend your stance. He said, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you with gentleness and reverence. In other words, you must always have a defense for your faith. No, defense don't mean you go on a defensive. Defense doesn't mean that you get angry. Defense don't mean that you, 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 know, you, you don't know what to say and you, you, you need your eyebrow. And that's not what the, the word defense here means. The word defense here means what we get, the word, where we get, I know some of you might be familiar with this word, apologetics. Apologetics is really uh, defending your Christian faith. In other words, having a reason. From the word apologetics, that's where we get the word apology. But the apology that you and I understand is that an apology is boy, I'm sorry. The apology means, apology really means giving a reason. Giving a reason. So if, instead of saying I'm sorry, you need to give a reason why you were late for that meeting. And then you say I'm sorry. So apology really means giving a reason. What Peter is saying, always be ready to make a defense for the hope that you have. Give an answer. So Peter, when they said this to him, Peter started to talk to the rulers in Acts. Hear what he says in Acts. Rulers and elders of the people, we, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, and he continues, and in other words, he's about now to give his apologetics. He's about now to give his apology. He's about now to give his reason. He's about now to give his defense for the faith that he holds. But you and I struggle to give a defense. You know why? We're not going to a Bible study. We're not having devotions. We're not in a connect group. When we come to church, we're not making notes. Uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not listening anything in, 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 on YouTube that is of, of, of benefit to, for, to our faith. And, and we struggle. We're not reading the Bible. Can't, brother. Can't, sister. We have to be able to give a defense for our stance. Know the thing that you believe. And thirdly, not only declare Jesus as Lord, not only defend, defend your stance, but Peter says, do right. Do right. Hear what he said. Verse 16. And keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather for doing what is wrong. Why are we doing this? So that Christ's name might be glorified. Peter says, do right. And not only do right legally in our country, but also do right lovingly. There's a difference. When you do right legally, you're just simply doing all of what the law requires. But love comes from the heart. So as Christians, we are called not only to be legal citizens, but loving citizens. Always remember that. The other thing I tell my boys when they're coming out of the, the car some mornings, most mornings, I say to them, boys, or I call them gentlemen, do well and do good. Now, those are like to say more, but it's not. Do well, meaning look after people, take care of people, and do good, meaning do the right things. I have to want to leave that with us. Do well and do, do good. Peter has called us to do exactly, exactly that. And so Peter, and he does not call us to do it. Peter himself did it. And so now he has what we call moral authority to tell us what to do. But let's move on to point number three. So we have looked at the ex ex exasperating circumstances ahead of us. We have looked at the experience of a convert alongside us. We're talking about Peter. And now we're going to be looking at an example or the example and encouragement of Christ, the ancestor of us. 
And by ancestor, I simply mean that Jesus, we, we, we come from Jesus as believing saints. Uh, Father Abraham had many sons. Well, Jesus has us. And so he is our ancestor. And he sets an example for us. And not just an example, but it is an encouragement. Let's read the scriptures again. Verse 18, for Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the un unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, Eight persons were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God from a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Let's look at a few things quickly. What you're seeing here is that as Peter begins, he's giving, he, Jesus is an example for us. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. So he's giving Jesus as an example. And here what he says first about Jesus. He says, for Christ also died for sins once for all. Watch this. In some of your versions, you might have Christ also suffered. In my version, it says Christ also died. Some people prefer to use suffer because the word suffer is, is Peter's favorite word. But the idea is, is the same. That yes, Jesus suffered, but we also know that Jesus also died. And so what Peter, what, what I see here for me is that it's almost like Peter, it's been escalated. We suffer, but Jesus suffered to the point of death. Some of us we haven't died yet. Some of us, we're not going to die because of any, any real suffering for Christ. But Jesus experienced the ultimate. It was escalated for, for him. It moved from suffering, not just suffering, to, to dying. And not just that, not, we only, not only see the escalation of this thing here, but we also see the exchange. There's an exchange that happened. Hear what it says, the just for the unjust. What an exchange. The just person suffered and died for the unjust so that we might not suffer and we might not die. But Jesus endured that. And it's an, it's an unfair exchange. We don't, we don't have a concept of that in our, in our culture, in our life. We, we have a culture that says, or a concept that says, listen, if I do right, then I must get right. If I do wrong, then I must get punishment. That's what we know. And if somebody gets, does, does wrong, then that person must suffer their wrong. I am not putting my life on the line for that person. Well, Jesus did that for us. It's an unfair exchange. Not just that, we see the escalation, there's an exchange, but there's also what I call an expungement. In other words, it says, he died for sins once and for all. In other words, we are, we are totally forgiven. We, this, it, it's totally wiped out. It, the slate is wiped clean once and for all. In other words, Jesus, that we die again. Our sins are forgiven one time and for all time. No, that's, that's, that's big. That's, that's beautiful. And Peter is building up this thing. The man doesn't know evil. He's a holy man, but he died for our sins once and for all. And not just that, then he may scar us. So we see the thing escalate. We see the, the unfair exchange. We see the expungement. No, he may scar us. Hear what he says, that he might bring us to God. He might bring us to God. Now, the idea there of that word, bring us to God, is, is Jesus is Jesus taking us to his father, who his father don't know us, and we don't know him father. And we, so we can't just walk in the room and say, well, I'm bossy. We, we can't do that because we don't know him. So Jesus, one day on, on his way from school with us, Jesus says, you want to be my father? I say, yeah, no, we, we know that your father is a powerful man and he's a wealthy man and so on. I mean, we hear everybody talking about Jesus. Come on, we, we bring it to him. 
And when Jesus, Jesus bring us through the, 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 the not only on the veranda, you know, the veranda is where, you know, you, you can know where you must bring people, you know, certain people you bring to certain places in the house, you know. So Jesus brings us on the veranda, then he opens the front door, he brings us through the front door, and when he brings us through the front door, he brings us upstairs, and we say, whoa, he might bring us out of the bedroom, and he brings us to the bedroom, and, and, and he just open the door upon the father, and say, daddy, be my friend. That's the idea of this word. He escorts us to the father. There's no way we could have gotten to the Father unless Jesus brings us to him. And all this happened because Jesus was enlightened. In other words, Jesus was brought, quickened by the Spirit and, and, and he came back to life and he's resurrected from there. But then something else happened after he was enlightened. He exposed the spiritual world. Now, this is the problem part of the text. This is a problem part. This, this particular verse has given even the church fathers and scholars a whole heap of trouble, and it still gives me trouble today. still give all of us trouble today. So let me just try and attempt what's going on here. So it says that Jesus, when he was made alive by the Spirit, he went and he made proclamation to the spirits now in prison. In other words, when Jesus was, died, and you couldn't see what was going on. All you saw was him dying and him resurrected. But there was something happening between those two, those two days, Friday and Sunday. There's something else happening. Jesus still had work to do. And Jesus went down into Hades. Jesus went down to the holding place for, 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 for the good, good people, good, the Christians and the, also the unrighteous, the, the righteous Christians and the unrighteous and ungodly people. Jesus went down and he made a proclamation. No, this is not a preaching, an evangelistic preaching. It's not a crusade that Jesus go down there go have. He simply made a proclamation. In other words, Jesus is alive. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And he went down and he made this proclamation. And it's a proclamation of condemnation, but it's also a proclamation telling those who died in, quote unquote, in Christ, who the, 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 the godly people telling them that, listen me, we, I am taking you out of here and you are coming with me. So, he went down into these parts, the holding place for the dead, and he made a proclamation. The idea of that word proclamation is, is of one who is, 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 is victorious and also one who is making an announcement. He's, he's heralding something. The, the, the word here means to herald or to make an announcement. And Jesus made an announcement to even the demons, telling them that he is king of kings and he is lord of lords. You see, Satan has always tried to kill Jesus, even as a, as, as a babe. Satan has always tried to eliminate him. And when he died on the cross, I'm sure Satan and his demons thought that this is it. And these demons that were, have been bound from Noah's time thought, hey, look, we're going to be free now. Jesus went down and let them know, said, listen to me, I am alive and nobody gets out of here because you're going to remain where you are. Victory. And remember, don't miss the point. Peter is building all of this to help us to understand that as we suffer, there is vindication. As we go through a violent situation, volatile situation, there is vindication from the Lord. Peter wants us to understand. Just as old, Jesus was vindicated. Remember, he died for our sins, the just for the unjust, but he rose again from the dead, hallelujah, and he is victorious king. And therefore, he can expose the darkness. He can let them know that he is in control. He can help them to understand that, listen to me, you have no claims and rights over God's people. And so P Peter wants people to understand that, listen to me, as much as Nero wants to kick up rumpus and go on, he is going to be subjected to the Christ, who is Lord of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then we have, not only do we have this exposing, but we also have this expression. And so Jesus also spoke about this baptism. 
the baptism that 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 Noah went through, and 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 then he makes the, the illustration that, of course, Noah's illustration, and he makes a point that we too are, are are being saved through baptism. Let me just explain what happens to Noah first. So, in Noah's time, of course, it says that the wickedness was rampant on, on the earth. It seems as though it was far much wickeder than now. It seems so. B because God does, God, God relented that he met man in vex. So he had to wipe out the then known world. And, and the, the, the demons had come up, the spirits, um, evil spirits had come, and they had, they had intermingled with women on the earth and started to cause havoc. And so God had to, to wipe them out. So he told Noah, build an ark. And Noah preached, build, well, in building the ark, he also preached, Noah preached for 120 years. And he was on those waters for about one year. Can you imagine? One year himself, what he preached for 120. In other words, the scripture here says that God was being patient. And as Noah went into that ark and there was rain falling for the first time, and of course water coming up maybe from the earth, because that's how uh, the earth got its, its water in those, in those times. Th this ark is submerged and this, this, this ark is going through the water. It must have been rough and rough and tumble. But, Peter, uh, but Noah got through the water and he became, was on dry land after a time. In a similar way, we are baptized. Remember, baptism signifies three things or symbolizes three things. One, death, burial, resurrection. This is why when a candidate is going into that water, he's a dead man or she or she's a dead person walking. When they are submerged under the water, the idea is that we have buried them. When we bring them up, the idea is that this is a brand new person you are looking at. In that sense, you are saved through water. But that is not to say that baptism saves. Though baptism is important, but it doesn't save. What saves is a clear conscience before God, knowing that you have done what God requires of us to do, to place faith in Jesus the Christ and follow him as a disciple. And one of the first public acts of obedience as a disciple of Jesus Christ is water baptism. Another reason why Peter would have, would have been challenging them as to this thing called baptism is this. That when the Jews and Gentiles in Peter's day, as they were under Nero, got baptized. That was it was something that would have been known to people, or made public, and so it became public knowledge that these persons have have identified with Jesus Christ. And because of that, you come under pressure. So, but Peter, so Peter is saying to them, "Listen to me. Even though you're coming under pressure because of the water, quote unquote, water baptism," he says, "I still implore us to still." undergo this thing called water baptism. Very important. In other words, identify with Jesus the Christ. And in, in, in identifying with Jesus Christ, one day we are going to be vindicated. Vindicated. So hold on my brother. Hold on my sister. There is hope to cope. And I want you not to let go. And that's a word to me, to don't let go. Push through. Even though society seems to be going against our stance and belief, let us push through. Let us, let us stand up for what is, is right because we believe that we're going to one day emerge as victors because of Jesus the Christ. And that's what Peter is trying to show us in this particular passage. That he wants us to understand that even though we suffer, we have a hope. There's something that we see. There's something that we're mindful of. There's something that we know. There's something we're looking forward to. And Peter is saying, hold on because you're going to be vindicated. One more thing I'm done. We're on the point number three, but one more E. We also see the exaltation of Jesus. Let me read a part of it quickly. It says, Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. 
victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Them songs there, we don't really sing them again. But there's, there's a powerful songs. In other words, watch this now. There's the exaltation of Jesus. In, in other words, this is ultimate vindication now, you know. That, that, that in Philippians, Paul puts it this way, that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that every knee above earth and under the earth going bow and say, Jesus, you are Lord. And so who no one bow going half a bow and everyone going half a bow to the claims of Jesus Christ. Everything is made subject to him. Angels, authorities, and powers when be subjected to him. So guess what? What Peter wants the believers then to understand and us here to understand is that we, we do what we do. We do the right that we need know to do. We love the way we need to want to, should love. And we should not fear. There's no fear in, in, in love. Perfect love casts out fear. And we must just do this thing because God is our vindication. See that? He has made Jesus Christ Lord over everything. All the angels, all the authorities, all powers. Jesus has done that. He's gone to, to heaven and he's ruling over. And guess what? He is coming again. So you and I need to hold strain and be strong because Jesus Christ is our hope. And he has given us this hope for us to cope. Friends, if you're not a Christian, we... Just want to encourage you to, to place your faith in Jesus Christ, you know, so that he might give you this hope to cope. We're living in very uh, troublesome times, and we're living in times when our hearts are failing us for fear. But we need not fear. We can put our hope in Jesus the Christ. As we kind of think about that, Praise team is going to come back and we're going to be having just a little time of worship again so we can do our own reflection and introspection. And remember, we have communion coming up in short order right after this song. Of course, Elder uh, Fredo is going to join me and he's going to be conducting our communion as we remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Stick around. Listen to this song. Most beautiful, God, you're most beautiful. One thing I desire, only this I seek is to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Dearest Father, Closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. One thing I desire, God, only this I seek is to dwell. Laying at your feet Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever Dearest Father, say dearest Father My closest friend You are most beautiful Father, you're my 
Good morning, morning brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining us this morning. I want to thank my brother Paul for sharing God's word with us this morning so boldly, so to the point, you know, of sharing as he continued in the in the in the series of Peter and the Peter series, um, hope to cope, you know, and I think that word really resonated. With, with all of us, that there is a way that we can have hope to really cope in these times. And, and, and I just made a few points, you know, Paul, just ex, ex, about the point about, you know, it is Jesus who made that possible. Mm. You know, Jesus is the example. I mean, and you share the part about, you know, the unfair exchange of Jesus, who yeah. is the just, you know, dying for the unjust, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's me. I really like that. I mean, Jesus died once for all, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to go through, don't have to repeat that again for us. Right. You know, oh, Jesus wiped our slate clean, mm -hmm. you know, clean slate. Really, really thank you for sharing that. And, and one of the points that jumped out to me, how Jesus just escort us mm -hmm. right to the throne room, as it were, of God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. come right boldly before the throne room. And I want to thank you um, for sharing with that. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate about it is that Jesus is Lord over all. Yeah. What a hallelujah. Jesus mm -hmm. is Lord over all. Mm -hmm. And I think it is so fitting that as we come to, to, to break bread, you know, this is what it's all about, that Jesus already conquered. Jesus already given us that hope as we traverse, you know, here on earth, you know, we have hope. And as we come to break bread this morning, I hope you have your, your, your emblems ready, you know, because we are here ready. And I just remind you, as the scripture says, you know, um, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass to you. And this is Paul writing. And it says, uh, on the night that he was betrayed, he what? He took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and says, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And my brother, um, let's give thanks. Yeah. So Father, we, we thank you again for your word to us this morning. Thank you how you could use our brother to, to minister to our hearts this morning. And the ultimate, Lord, is about you. Lord, and we pray, even as you have left us that example, Lord, we hold to that, that there is hope in you dying. Lord, not just in you dying, but Lord, you rose again from the grave. Lord, not just you rose again from the grave, but you are seated in the heavenlies above principalities and powers. We can 
hope in you lies that we are able to cope. Mm -hmm. Lord, even as your body was bruised, mm -hmm. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, and we mm -hmm. pray even now that, that your body was broken for us. And even as we give you thanks, Lord, for, for this, we just say, hallelujah, what a God. Mm -hmm. We just bless you and we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're already given thanks, so just encourage you. Let's let's eat. The scripture also reminds us that in the same way after supper, you took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I know my brother, you are being, you are shared the word, but I just give you the opportunity to just give thanks. Um, for the cup. Let's give thanks. <clears throat> no blood, no altar now. The sacrifice is over. No flame, no smoke ascend on high. The lamb is slain no more. But richer blood has flowed from nobler veins to purge the soul from guilt and cleanse the reddest of stains. Lord, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ who has made all of this possible. We thank you, Father, for giving your son to die on the cross for us, the just for the unjust, once and for all. We do not need to do this again. And so that as we drink of this cup, may we do this with great reverence and fear of you. And also with thanksgiving, thanking you for including us in your family. Lord, we do this once more, yet it's one timeless mm -hmm. as we await the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, when we will be ultimately vindicated. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Let us drink. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we'll just have a time of prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank you again for who you are. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercies towards us. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we can come to the throne room of grace where we can find mercy in the time of need. Lord, as we come this morning, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we cry. Lord, I thank you this morning as we just lift up to you, Lord, those who are, are not well, mm. Lord, in our midst. Lord, I pray this morning, even for, you know, someone who is probably listening this morning and not feeling well in their bodies. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will touch them. Touch them even now, Father. Lord, make them be be well, be whole. Father, we thank you that you are our healer. Mm. You are the restorer. Mm. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will touch many, Lord, who are, you know, who are sick and healing at this time. Lord, we ask that you will bring comfort. You will bring hope. You will bring that assurance, Lord, mm. that you are the God who heals. Mm. Lord, we think about those who are uh, uh, mourning in our midst at this time. Lord, the last of loved ones. Lord, we pray that you will just bring your peace in the storms of life, even now to those who are worried, 
those who are troubled. God, bring peace. Wrap your arms around them. Lord, we pray that you will just, just give them that assurance, God, that you are with them. You promise never to leave us, nor forsake us. And we pray, Lord, this morning, that they will feel your love, that your arms wrapped around them. Give them that assurance this morning, Lord. And we just pray, God, that you will be with them. Lord, we thank you for what you will continue to do in lives. Lord, we lift up our nation, Jamaica, land we love. We thank you for this beautiful island. Lord, but as you see the different things that are happening from time to time, Lord, we just bring our leaders before you this morning, and we pray for them, Lord. We pray for them. We pray, Lord, that you will give wisdom to those who lead us. Lord, that you will give um, a direction, a sense of that hope and purpose, Lord, in their very own lives. Lord, we pray that you will bring unity, mm. Lord, amongst them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that, Lord, even as they, they go about the, the daily shores, Lord, that you will, will, will lead them and confront them, Lord, into the things that you desire of them and what you want of them for this nation. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray that they will humble themselves before you. Lord, that they will seek your face. Lord, that they will just, just know that you are God. Father, we just pray, you see, even in our nation at this time, Lord, a, a time of election that is in the air. Lord, we pray, Lord God, for your covering. We pray for your peace in this election, Lord, that will take place. We ask, Lord, that you will just bring your peace into the hearts of, 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 of your people. Lord, bring peace into the, 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 the ones who will be on the road and, you know, the excitement for some. Lord, I pray that, Lord, this election will be one that will be peaceful. Lord, one that, Lord, that things will go smoothly. Lord, we pray that your will be done in this election. Lord, we pray that only, Lord, you are the one who established and you are the one who teared, uh, pulled down. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that even in this, that we want your will to be done. So, Lord, we just bring every um, affairs of our nation to you at this time in every area, Lord. And we pray that you will have mercy upon us. Lord, we look to you. We pray for your provision for us as a people. We just thank you, Lord, for what you will continue to do as you watch over us. Lord, cover our borders, cover this nation, Lord, under your blood. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to rule and to reign in this nation. We bless you and we just say thank you, Lord, for who you are and for what you continue to do as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Join us now in a song of worship and then after we'll have the benediction. You are most beautiful. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares. Jesus Christ.
powerful name, beautiful name. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Just raise your hands with me for the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. I got the news. To receive confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Okay, guys, it's super important. By the way, gonna look pretty, man. Now listen, get your notepads out, get your phones out, use the notepad feature because the important updates for this week are coming up. You definitely don't want to miss out on how you can connect, grow, and serve. Come on, man, let's go, let's go, let's do this, family. Baby blessing registration can now be done online. Visit our church center app below to register your child. Baby blessings take place on the first Sunday of each month. Meet up. The Young Adult-Led Ministry will be online only this Monday, February 26, due to the local government elections. See you live and in living colors next week Monday, March 4. There will be no meetup in person this Monday. Dance like David with Dance Connection. This and every other Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at number 5. Click the Church Center app below and register today. Recharge your mind, body, and spirit at Wellness Wednesday. This and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at number 7. Commit to a healthier, happier you. Ladies, join Arise this Friday, March 1, as we continue our series exploring the different pathways in which we connect to God. Start time, 6.30 p.m. See you there. Brother, talk the truth. Money matters. But we want to control money and not have money control we. Bruce Scott, I'm going to help you understand how that works as we talk dollars and cents. This Friday, March 1st, starting at 7 p.m. This is the first hard talk of 2024. Bring your brethren. This is a male-only event. Mellow is the men's ministry of Fall of Future. It's finally here, the Arise Potluck Fellowship. Saturday, March 2, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the courtyard at number nine. Bring some food and together, ladies, we create the fellowship. We are going to have a wonderful time. See you there. The Sports and Recreation Ministry is pleased to present the Swallow Quiz Competition, the first PETA series. Connect and medium groups assemble your teams, listen keenly to the sermons, take notes and showcase your knowledge and teamwork for a chance to lift the championship trophy. Register your teams today and let us connect and grow together. Which team will emerge the champions? Register now in the foyer. Join us in worship next Sunday as Pastor David continues to guide us through our reflections in 1 Peter. Remember to invite someone to church and bring the entire family. Come and be blessed. Meet up online tomorrow. Okay, got it. And I hope you got it as well. But if not, don't worry, we have you covered. Swallowfieldschapel.churchcenter.com is the website that you can go to right now. You'll see the list of events coming up and you'll also find the different ministries where you can connect, grow, and serve. Yeah, man, let's get involved and let us make this an amazing week for somebody and just, just be awesome, just like how God created you to be. Take care now. Hey.